Assalamu alaikum, hope you're all doing well, inshallah. Today we are taking a dive into Surat Ash-Shams, inshallah. It is a beautiful surah. The theme is the human nafs and the two choices we have in life. Let's just jump right into it. This surah has the longest string of oaths in the Quran. The first seven verses have oaths in them. And this tells us that Allah is about to tell us something very important. Anytime that there is an oath, that means that something important is about to be highlighted. So in this case, we have seven verses of oaths telling us to pay attention. Something really important is going to be mentioned. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا By the sun and its brightness. So when you see this wa, this wa is telling us that he's swearing by this thing. So وَالشَّمْسِ He's swearing by the sun. He's swearing on the sun as a creation on its own, right? As an entity on its own, the sun itself. He's swearing by the sun as an entity. And then he adds to it, and by its brightness or by duhaha, when things become clear and appear. Some take this to mean the duha time, which is the period of time after sunrise. And some take this to just mean the day as a whole, because at daytime, everything is clear and appears and then وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا and by the moon when it follows it it meaning what it follows what the sun or the day right the moon follows it now this is interesting because it doesn't swear on just وَالْقَمَرِ and then something else it's وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا and the moon when it follows it he connects the moon to the sun when it follows it, when it follows the sun or the day. He doesn't swear on the moon as an entity on its own. So it is like it is given subservient status to the sun. This is really interesting, right? It doesn't say and the moon and its brightness. When we talked about the sun, it said and the sun and its brightness, right? He swore by the sun and its brightness. And what's interesting is that nowadays we know that the moon does not have its own brightness right? The moon follows the sun, doesn't it? The moon reflects light from the sun. The light that we see from the moon is not light from the moon, right? It's the sun's light which is reflecting on the moon. The moon doesn't have its own light. The sun has its own light. The moon doesn't. So it's really fitting that Allah swore on the sun and its light and its brightness, but didn't swear on the moon and its brightness, he connected the moon to the sun. And the moon reflects the sun's light. So subhanAllah, we see this subtle phrasing that captures this. The moon is connected to the sun. Because the moon as we see it and its light is a reflection of the sun. So it follows the sun. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا And by the day when it displays it. So the daytime is when the sun is in full display for us, for us to appreciate and recognize. At that point in time is when we see the sun in its full display. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا And by the night, when it covers it, the night blankets the sun. At night time, we are not seeing the sun anymore, right? So it's covered from us. Yet it still exists. But at night time, it is covered from our view. So we don't see it and we don't experience its light. وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا And by the sky, وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَمَا بَنَاهَا can be interpreted in two ways. The first way is وَمَا بَنَاهَا can be and its construction. So he's swearing by the construction of the sky. Or it can mean by its creator. So by the one who created the sky. So it can be interpreted both ways. So he swears by the sky, right? The sky is incredible. As it is on its own, it's incredible, right? But what's also really incredible about the sky is its construction. Because when we look at the sky, we don't see pillars holding it up. We don't see anything holding it up. It is there above us. We, we can't even tell how it is constructed, how it is being held up. So it is miraculous how it has been created above us. So he swears about all these different miracles in his creation, the sun, the moon, the day, the night, all these different moments, the sky, its creation. And by the earth and he who spreads it, he spread it, he proportioned it. So he's also 
swearing by his creation of the earth and how it was spread right it has been made comfortable for us we're able to build on it we're able to live on it it has been spread out for us to be able to use and benefit from it so he swears by all these creations and he has sworn he has started off the surah swearing by all these different types of creations all of these different creations are things that are not held accountable these things run in perfect discipline in perfect harmony with each other the sun the moon the day the night everything is in perfect harmony perfect balance with each other there are set boundaries everything is working within those boundaries so it's a complete system working in harmony the sun the moon day night sky earth all of them they're working in beautiful harmony and discipline with each other and then in verse 7 what does he swear by sin wama sawaha and then we come to the nafs the nafs wama sawaha and by the soul and he who proportioned it so he told us about all his creation that he has created in perfect discipline and now he comes to the nafs us our nafs and also that he has proportioned it perfectly he reminds us his creation of us is perfectly proportioned and he's swearing by this creation so he's swearing by the nafs he perfected its creation as well the difference is that the nafs has a choice it's not like the sun and the moon and the earth and the sky they're working they are disciplined and they are working in perfect harmony within set guidelines they are disciplined right but us we may not always have that discipline even though he created us and proportioned us perfectly but the difference is that we have a choice we have actions that we can choose to do and not to do and we are held accountable for those choices now nafs sometimes you see it interchangeably used with uh, soul or ruh in arabic right but some say that there is a, a slight difference between those two because the nafs in general is linked to the body it is connected to the body so when we talk about the nafs we are taking into consideration that this is the soul that is associated with the body but when we talk about ruh alone it can be looked at independently so for example if the soul departs a body we call it ruh right or if we are talking about the soul independently we can also call it ruh so some say that there is a slight difference whereas nafs is associated and linked with your physical body so it's the soul that's connected to your physical body they're kind of linked together and we have different nafs in the quran mentioned right we have we have an nafs al inna the tranquil soul we have an nafs al the self-reproaching soul the blaming soul the one that makes a mistake and then realizes oh i've made a mistake and then they're self-reflective and and self-reproaching of that and then you have a verse that tells us inna nafsa la'amaratun bisu. so we have a nafs that is inclined to evil that is the one that is just following evil desires and inclined to them and acting upon it so we see three different types of nafs in the quran so allah tells us that he created our nafs perfectly right and then what does he say فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا he inspired it with its wickedness and its righteousness so he inspired it to know the difference between good and bad so we have a gut feeling right some we have feelings that certain things are not good or certain things are bad he has basically programmed each one of us to know right versus wrong so it's like a gut feeling that you have when you're about to do something and you you feel that this is a wrong thing right he's programmed us to know and then what does he tell us قد أفلح من زكاها. the one who purifies it succeeds this is the important concept that allah is now bringing to light he is telling us who the person who works to purify it that is the successful person so he's telling us how to be successful in this dunya we have to work on the nafs we have to purify it and purify it and purify it each one of us is responsible for our nafs we have to put work into purifying it so how do you work to 
identify it working to improve yourself striving to do the acts that are in obedience to Allah and staying away from the acts that are in disobedience to Allah it takes effort we can tell from this verse it takes work it takes effort so we keep trying and trying and trying inshallah to keep purifying this nafs because he tells us in the next verse وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا and he has failed who instills it with corruption دَسَّاهَا conceals it makes it dull, neglects it the one who neglects it and presses it down and conceals it and makes it dull that person will be in disappointment قَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا that person will be in disappointment when he told us about the creation of the sun, moon, earth, sky everything was in perfect balance this person that he explains here is a person who has lost their balance, right? They have compressed their heart, concealed it, made it dull. They have swayed too much one way. They're not in balance anymore. And he tells us that is the person that will be in disappointment. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَا Thamud denied by reason of their transgression. It's understood here that denied meaning they denied their prophet, the message that he came with. They denied their prophet that was sent uh, to them and Allah tells us بِطَغْوَاهَا he tells us why they they denied they were at a state of such transgression they denied because of their transgression so they were in a state of such transgression that their heart rejected the truth and rejected the message so their hearts rejected guidance as a result of the transgression that they were in إِذِنْ بَعْثَ أَشْقَاهَا when the most wretched of them was sent forth who is this wretched person? Who, who is this that was sent forth? So it's understood that this is the leader of the tribe. And he, we are told that he rose amongst them, this person. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of a background, what this means here. So one of the miracles of their prophet, which was Prophet Salih, one of the miracles that he came with was a she-camel that Allah made come out of a rock, like a mountain rock. He made the she-camel come out of it and it was a miracle to the people of Thamud. It was a sign for them, a miracle for them. And this she camel, it is said that she could produce an incredible amount of milk that would suffice all of them, all the thousands of people, it would be more than sufficient for them. So she would, was producing an incredible amount of milk for the people. But there was a condition. The camel would be given a day to drink from their water. And on that day, they were not allowed to take from their water. And then the next day, they would be able to have their water and the camel would stay away. So they were basically alternating. So that was the condition that they were given. So they had so much milk, so much blessing, so much barakah, but there was a condition to it, right? And it's the same with us. We have so many blessings, right? The blessings of Quran, guidance, everything that we have. But we have conditions. We have guidelines. There are boundaries. Everything needs to be in balance. Now they got tired and impatient. They got tired of sharing their resources. They got tired of the condition. So the leader from amongst them rises and wants to kill the camel. So that is what this verse is referring to. That the most wretched amongst them rose. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقْيَاهَا And the messenger of Allah said to them, That is the she-camel of Allah and her drink so he tells them not to harm her that is a she camel from allah and it is her drink don't transgress against her in drinking you know the condition she has been given a day and you have been given a day but they denied him and they killed her so their lord destroyed them because of their sin and made it equal they rejected what he came with, right? And they rejected his condition that he had given them from Allah. And they killed the camel. فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ So Allah destroyed them. It is said that this large, strong sound, which was repetitive, came to them. دَمْدَمَ The word دَمْدَمَ is in repetitive nature, so it's understood that the sound was repetitive to them and it destroyed them. Large, shrieking sound. That then destroyed them and again Allah tells us be them be him he destroyed them what by their own sins it's because of their own transgression and because of their own sins that this punishment came to them a reminder to us that Allah is fair and just it was their sins that caused them to be destroyed Allah is fair and just he didn't just simply destroy them just because 
Now we see it is plural in this case, right? We were told earlier that the most wretched amongst them, in singular one person, rose from amongst them, right? But in this verse, it's plur plural, right? They denied him and they killed her. And we see that Allah destroyed them all. And so it's understood in plural that the whole tribe was in agreement with their leader who did this. They were all in allegiance with him. So they were all responsible. They all had the same decision, the same opinion. And so they were all held responsible. Fasawaha equally he made it equal what does it mean he made it equal so some take this to mean that he made it equal meaning equally amongst them all that they were all destroyed equally because they all carry the same position and they were all in allegiance and in support of killing this uh, camel and denying the message and the prophet that had come to them so they were equally all destroyed or fasawaha equally meaning the earth was spread out and made equal again so that there was no sign of these people having been there and he does not fear the consequence of it. Who does not fear the consequence uh, thereof? It's understood generally that this is referring to Allah. So when we do things, we may question, right? If we did the right thing, what the consequences are and so on. You might question or doubt or did we do the right thing? But Allah is free of concern and consequences. When he makes a decision, he answers to no one. And also remember that he makes no mistakes. Every action of his comes with full, complete knowledge and wisdom. So do not question Allah's decisions. So in this surah, it was a reminder to us, right, about our nafs and us making sure that we are in balance, paying attention. Allah has given us set guidelines for us to be within certain boundaries. The same way that the sun, moon, sky, earth, and everything around us is within set guidelines and boundaries and has certain conditions, we also have set guidelines and boundaries for our own benefit. So Allah tells us that he created everything in perfect balance. He teaches us the importance of balance in our own lives. He gives us a means to success, which is what purifying our nafs, working on this. We all can work on it. We all are in control of working on it. So let's put the effort and strive and strive and strive to work on it. And he reminds us that we are, we are accountable for actions. He gives us example of a group of people that were held accountable because of their rejection, because they swayed out of balance. And he also reminds us that he is in full control. And remember that he's fair and just with every decision that he makes. So... I hope that this is a reminder, inshallah, for all of us to work on purifying the sniffs. Let's put in the effort, let's strive, let's work on purifying the sniffs so we can be from the successful. And you know something interesting in these verses? When you see the difference between قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ and قَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَ Even the sound of the word, subhanAllah, there are words in Arabic that are opposites where even the, the sound of them captures the meaning. So when we say أفلح, the one who is successful, أفلح, the word even sounds like a breath of fresh air, like you're relieved, أفلح, you're relieved. The other word where you're disappointed and you failed, خاب, وقد خاب. The word khab feels like oh, a disappointment. The word itself captures that feeling, right? SubhanAllah, it's, even in the words you feel the, the difference of how the word is. So may Allah make us of the people who are successful and feel that relief from being successful. I hope that you found benefit in this uh, surah. May Allah bless you all and keep us all striving to purify our nafs. Assalamu alaikum.